I don't care what the race is. We're so divided in this country. It's, uh, it's, um, I look for moderates in both parties, and I think that's, uh, uh, that's extinct. So it's, it's a shame we've gotten to this so polarized. I'm going to go with Trump. That's just, that's my thing. I'm tired of politicians. I'm going to vote for the non-politician. Aloha and namaste again, everyone. It is 5 p.m. in New York City. I'm John Heilman here for Nicole Wallace. Get ready. I'm here all week. We are exactly three months out from the 2022 midterm elections. Historic, important, consequential, never bigger. This hour, we'll be taking a look at developments in three key battleground states, not just this fall, but in 2024 also, uh, in, in, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, and Florida, three the most important states. All of them could have huge implications for the future of our country and of our democracy. And of course, of course, the former president and his big lie about the 2020 election feature prominently in all of them. We will start in the Badger State. You just heard from a few voters there in that soundbite that we played uh, a state whose 2020 election results were and still are a massive fixation for the former president. It was from Waukesha County, too, one of the key counties in the state. Tomorrow, you have primary races in Wisconsin that will prove to be yet another test of Trump's power over the Republican Party. In 2020, former president lost the state by about 20,000 votes. And despite there being no evidence, and I mean no, nil, nada, zero, zilch evidence of fraud, he's still calling on the state to decertify its 10 electoral votes for Joe Biden. That focus has been embraced by the former president's base. The New York Times out with reporting on how Republican voters are demanding an impossible task of their elected officials. Quote, Mr. Trump supporters have turned fury over his 2020 election loss and the misguided belief that its results can be nullified into central campaign issues in the Republican primary for governor of Wisconsin, a battleground state won by razor thin margins in the last two presidential elections. GOP candidates have been left choosing whether to tell voters they are wrong, which of course is what they would have to do if they cared about the truth, or engage in the fiction that something can be done to reverse Mr. Trump's defeat. We are seeing that play out now among GOP gubernatorial candidates ahead of tomorrow's primary, the Trump-backed Tim Michaels. He said he's willing to consider legislation to decertify, but largely shied away from discussing the 2020 results. Meanwhile, his opponent, Rebecca Clayfish, who still proudly who, who proudly touts her support of Trump, she finds decertifying to be crossing the line. Clayfish, who has endorsements from former VP Mike Pence and former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, says, quote, I'm not saying that the passion is imaginary, I'm not saying that the mistrust is imaginary. I'm saying the idea that you can disavow the Constitution and statutes and do things that are not articulated anywhere in the law is a lost cause. And there's no path that is articulated to do that. For a friend of this show and former conservative talk radio host in Wisconsin, Charlie Sykes, points out the current rift in the party. Quote, this is all another indication of how Trump's influence can be damaging rather than boosting Republicans in general. It further divides the Republicans from one another. It's going to allow MAGA world to label Clayfish as a Mike Pence rhino, which would have been inconceivable one year ago. Also on tomorrow's primary ballot, Wisconsin State Assembly Speaker Robin Voss, who has been a longtime target of the former president, Voss refused to cave to Trump's pressure to decertify the 2020 results. During a rally in Wisconsin on Friday night, Trump called Voss a rhino, big surprise, and urged voters to support Voss's challenger. Joining us this hour, Washington Post senior national political correspondent Ashley Parker. Also with us, Neil Katyal, former acting Solicitor General of the United States, now a law professor at Georgetown University, and former RNC chairman Michael Steele, a man who, I mean, in this chair last week, I mean, has anybody ever has anybody ever done it better? I mean, other than Nicole Wallace, no one's ever done it better. Uh, dude, my, my, I'm just following your lead, brother. <laughs> Michael Steele, I, I, I need you to come up here and sit with me, brother, to, to, to kind of try to teach me how it's done. Um, uh, but I'm going to start with Ashley Parker anyway, uh, because, Ashley, you're the one who is uh, out there in the world covering politics. And I am, I, as you know, I, I have historical ancestors in, in Wisconsin. I care about what happens in that state. It's a really important state in terms of understanding who's going to be the next president of the United States. Tell us what's going on there relative to the big lie and how it is playing out. We took down a little survey of it here in that script read. But I'm curious what your impression is about what the state of play on those on those issues heading into the primaries tomorrow. Well, again, Wisconsin is just the latest state that has become sort of a, a litmus test, not just for the power that former President Trump has over the party, but really 
for, again, his, his litmus test that any candidate he supports has to support his assertion of the big lie, which is the false and baseless claim that the 2020 election was somehow stolen. And then in Wisconsin, you're seeing it go a step further, this idea that not only do these candidates have to express fealty to the idea that it was stolen, but they have to claim to be able to do something that they literally have no power to do, which is to decertify the results of an election held nearly two years ago. You know, in, in layman's terms, what former President Trump is asking them to do is sort of like a student government election in third grade, where he's asking them to promise the students, you know, chocolate milk in the cafeteria in recess all day. Um, and you are seeing some of these candidates do just that. So regardless of who wins uh, on primary day, in certain ways, former President Trump has already won in that he, he's just created this as a debate or a discussion or a thing that, po you know, adult politicians are able to say with a straight face. Neil, I ask you, um, as, as Ashley points out, this is an election that took place 21 months ago. And, uh, and the, the, the former president and his supporters are demanding still that it that somehow it be overturned. To this day, they're still at, they're still asking for it. I, I, I you know you're you're a super smart guy, and I and, I, and you, you know the law really well. I can't help but think that you watch these these events un, unfold in our politics, and you think to yourself that there should be some kind of a way to like decertify these arguments. That just kind of a priori they should be knocked out of our politics because they're just not possible. There's not like this is not a question of opinion or where you stand on public policy. This is not a doable thing. Why are we discussing it in any context right now in the state of Wisconsin? Right. Namaste, John. Um, great to see you. And I completely agree. And I think Ashley's litmus test, I'd like to just put a spin on it because I think it's, you know, the, this Wisconsin primary is a really good illustration of how Trump and the Republican Party have succeeded in normalizing a brand of basically post truth politics that allows them to blow off facts that they find inconvenient. And so you say there should be some way to decertify these claims. And there is 62 different courts, federal and state, including the U.S. Supreme Court, which is not exactly in Joe Biden's pocket, ruled against them time and time again. And so the, the, what, what the Trump people are saying is, well, look, the Wisconsin Supreme Court, which is quite a, is a very conservative court, in July said that the drop boxes that were used in the 2020 election were illegal. And because these were the drop boxes that were used during the COVID pandemic. And the result of this, they say, is, well, let's throw out the hundreds of thousands of people who voted that way, which is an unconscionable argument. In elections law, the touchstone, John, is always trying to give effect to the will of the voters. And they just want to toss out all these ballots. Now, that's something that might work in, like, the Soviet Union, but it's as profoundly un-American as you can get. And as Ashley says, even if it were right, there's no back sees here. There's no way to get a redo and do the election again. Um, you know, this is basically an empty political promise by these people in Wisconsin. There's no mechanism whatsoever to take back the certification. These promises are literally ones that these candidates cannot keep, which takes, I guess, election politics to a whole nother level.